I'm gonna play this one out because he seems decent. All right, let's see what we got here. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are testing out the ultimate spring and summer tackle box sponsored by Carl's Bait and Tackle. Let's go. But before we hit the water, guys, we just want to make a quick announcement. We got some new stuff for the John boat. I was going to tell you guys about these upgrades. It's already been mentioned on Instagram. We went ahead and got a 1,000 pound winch. The last one that we had on here, it went from the original owner, was just completely rusted out and uh, it was ready for a replacement. It was like a little rope instead of a nice, solid, thick strap right there. So much easier, as well as even that connector piece. It's just a nice little upgrade. Great. And then, I don't know what this is called, we'll just call it the little roller. We also got a new roller for this bad boy because the last one had also deteriorated, so some trailer upgrades. Now let's go ahead and get into today's video and showcase the tackle box of the century. I think that's the only way. Uh, maybe. Well, I'm gonna have to probably just kinda gun it. Definitely worse going the other way. Well, okay, we made it. <sighs> yeah, it does have the trolling motors. We can cruise around this place. Let's get situated. I think we're in the clear. All right, y'all, let's get started. I can already tell you what the MVP is going to be out of this thing. I am already feeling the sun. And we got one of these neck buffs in here. Check this out. Now, this right here is going to keep me from getting burnt all day. There we go. How about that? SPF 1000. All right, y'all, we're going to start things off with the Saucy Swimmer, one of my favorite all-purpose baits. You can swim it. I'm also going to, since this is deeper water, just kind of let it fall down a little bit. And then I'll start cruising it on just a single hook. This is on a 4 aught underspin hook. It's by Heavy Metal Tungsten. So these things we love for the saucy swimmers. Grab you some hooks like that. Perfect for throwing those swim baits. Let's see what we got over here. Want to go over to the reeds? <laughs> Looks like the weeds in our yard. All right, y'all. It's time to break something else out of the Mondo Kit Pro. I know exactly what I'm going for. We're starting to get into some thick reeds and some grass and a lot of it. Hydrilla galore. I'm pretty sure there's some bluegill in here, which is great because I am going to throw the bluegill color grass hero swim jig. This is what you want to throw when stuff gets thick, you guys. It's got a soft like plastic weed guard, right? So like these fish can hit it on the go and you can get them with a moderate hook set since they will be eating it on the run as opposed to a bottom bite where you really smash the hook set. Also, it's going to help keep grass off the hook there. So this guy is going to be perfect. We're going to put a saucy swimmer on the back. I love that they put the saucy swimmers in here with the grass hero because it is the perfect pairing. So you're just going to kind of size this up and see where you're gonna need to exit the plastic and the hook. And start sliding this guy on. I've got that position kind of marked with my finger. It fits perfectly. It's not scrunched, it's not stretched. It is exactly what you want. Now, I normally like fishing this stuff with our Guggen Squad muscle rod, but I'm gonna be throwing it on the go too today. I just like a little extra power. And oftentimes I'll fish these with straight braid, like that moss green color braid or like the Guggen Squad braid 50 pound, because you're really just popping through a lot of grass when you use these. If you're fishing open water, you might choose something else. So you just really want a lot of strength with that line. You wanna feel those bites. You're gonna be feeling weight a lot as you work through the thick grass with these. So you want to be able to decipher that. And with no stretch in braid, it's oftentimes the best for these swim jigs but i'm throwing it on fluorocarbon and this might be the first fish in the boat devin is on is that the saucy swimmer so she's throwing a saucy swimmer as well but just uh on that underspin hook so not on a swim jig nice fish too nice fish too all right there we go wow we'll take it all right all right first fish in the boat just as Weston was re-rigging. This is a little bit of a bigger saucy swimmer on that underspin, but went ahead and secured us the first fish in the boat. My first bite, excited. Nice. Oh, he's going in the tree. Oh, that's not good. Got you. Keep him high. Keep him high. Keep him high. 
Nice, nice. Another one on the saucy swimmer. Oh, another solid one. I'm over here trying to drop down the trolling motor, rod in my hand, not knowing what's going on over here. Fish number two in the boat on the saucy swimmer from the kit. Uh, I don't think it does, but it is pretty cool back there. Got him. Number three. They like that underspin, I guess. Jeez. Oh, that looks like a pretty good one. Yeah. Up. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of uh, Devin Smith channel. This is your host. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'm just here for the fun. <laughs> That's balling. Look at it. You can see me. Yeah. That's crazy. Just got the Insta 360 cam set up, y'all. We're going to see about some 360 footage. Here we go, first fish for me. It feels small, but it could just be swimming towards us. I am completely unsure. On the swim jig from the kit, as well as the sauce from the box that has been getting them. Yes, sick. Okay, we will take that. Another fish in the boat. Show that to the old 360 cam, and we will get him out of here. I think that's number four on the day. All right, y'all, we've been getting a lot on the saucy swimmers. I'm now gonna break out the crank bait. There's a mini banger that comes in the box. This is the regular size banger. They're essentially the exact same. This one is like slightly larger. Same diving depth, if I'm not mistaken. So we're just gonna, because I already have it tied on, cast it out. Uh, so look, I didn't even hardly need the tackle box. I already know my favorite baits and it's funny, but this one actually just happens to come in that Mondo Kit Pro. So, sexy shad banger crank bait. This one might be a little tough with all the grass. These are better around rock. But that is okay. Look at, look at the bluegill. Oh my gosh. The bluegill's gonna eat it. He's under it. Wow. That was funny. Oh, there we go. That's maybe a good one. Look at him. He's gonna try and go around the trolling motor. I'm gonna play this one out because he seems decent. Yeah. All right, well, we got a nice one on the crankbait over here. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to flip it, huh? I don't know. Oh, he's barely hooked. All right, let's see what we got here. You're good. All right, there we go. Fat one on the crank. Holy smokes. And look, barely hooked. That's why you want, oh my gosh, just came right out. That's why you gotta be so gentle with these things. If you're using a broomstick heavy rod, you can lose those bass. Oh my goodness, how fat is that? My goodness, the crankbait coming through. Good, rolling. All right, y'all, so you can see, this is that banger crankbait right here. And then this is the mini banger from the box. So. We already know we love shallow diving crankbaits. They both fall into that category. This guy here dives like one to four feet. This one, about two to five. Got a little rattle in there. Perfect way to cover water and find those fish. And so obviously it's one of our favorites. Springtime, you're gonna absolutely slay. Once we get into summertime, a lot of times those bass will go out deeper, but you can still get away with fishing these early, right at sunrise, sunset, first and last light essentially, as those bass are coming up shallow to feed. So a shallow diving crankbait, just absolutely amazing. You really wanna try and get that square bill to deflect off a cover. Stuff like uh, branches from trees, uh, submerged timber, essentially rock, things of that nature. Great places to fish the square bill. You will get caught up if you're fishing them in grass as well as, you know, if you're trying to cast against these reeds, you see me, I'm kind of working it a little bit differently. I have the rod tip raised, that way hopefully it doesn't dive down as deep. That's kind of the goal there. So just a quick recap on everything in the box and some tips on how to throw them. The Grass Hero Swim Jig opposed to that banger is perfect for the grass. You saw us working it right up in the cover. You can really get away with fishing that bait in the thick stuff. So that is going to be an excellent option. Just steady retrieve or you can go ahead and kind of pop and reel at the same time. I like doing that. It kind of pops the skirt, gets grass off of it as you push through it and it kind of pops right in front of those fish. Boom. The zinger, we started off with it, didn't get a fish, but on cloudy, windy days, it's just an absolute staple. A lot of flash, uh, especially for fishing murky water. This is probably my number one choice, something like chocolate milk, or even, even this uh, clarity here, it's not crystal clear. So that zinger with those little blades flashing, uh, a willow and a Colorado blade, or willow and Colorado blade, I pointed at the wrong ones there. Uh, a lot of flash. It looks like a school of fish the bass cannot resist. They come up and they eat it. You can also toss the saucy swimmers as a trailer on this bait, just like the swim jig, but we don't have any shad ones, and that's kind of the color I'd want to match up with this one in the box. So I would just throw this thing straight out of the box. You're going to catch fish. I think this is the half ounce size right here. With these 3.3 inch saucy swimmers inside of the box, you have so much versatility. This is a bite sized morsel for anything in the ponds and lakes. You will absolutely catch fish. Natural color cannot go wrong. You could finesse these down on something 
something like a little Ned rig. You could throw it on spinning gear. You can throw it on casting gear. You could do a weighted underbelly hook. You could also do something like a flashy swimmer, which is what Devin was throwing it on. And then you can use it as trailers for things like your spinner baits and uh, where's that, the swim jig, things of that nature. So, so many options when it comes to the 3.3 inch saucy swimmer. And last but not least, the filthy frog, the top water. We'll probably not talk about it too much in today's video. We might be able to find a bite, but it's gonna be a little tough. The reason we probably won't talk about the frog too much is because usually midday, you're not gonna get too many top water bites. This is reserved for almost those warmer months though, that spring, summer, fall, when you have the higher water temperatures. And so you can get those top water blow ups most frequently right at sunrise and sunset is the best time to throw them. I'm not sure again, if we can get on one today. You also get a Guggen Squad sticker in the tackle box and you see me staying covered and comfortable with the neck buff, you guys. So everything in this box getting utilized today. The last thing I wanna talk about is rod and reel choice as well as line. So for the reel, I think a lot of gear ratios, you're gonna be just fine. You reel it faster or slower, don't overcomplicate things. Grab you something with like 100 to 200 spool size, you're gonna be fine and dandy. For the rod, I recommend the Guggen Squad Go 2 rod or equivalent in your favorite brand. Something like a seven foot medium heavy fast action rod is gonna be great for everything in this box. If you've got the budget or the arsenal, then go ahead and grab something like the Guggen Squad Reaction Rod or a crankbait dedicated rod for the crankbait. The swim jig, I would throw that on more of a heavy stouter rod, something like the Guggen Squad Muscle Rod if I had my pick. And when it comes to line, I would throw the swim jig and the frog ideally on braid. Braid floats, the frog floats, you're not gonna get away with fishing that on floral carbon or monofilament, but you can get away with everything else on fluorocarbon. I would recommend 15 pound fluorocarbon for everything else in the box if you just had one combo, right? So the banger, the saucy swimmer, the zinger, everything aside from the frog, 15 pound fluorocarbon is great all purpose, all around line, and is gonna accommodate you. Enough with the jibber jabber, y'all. Let's get the GoPro back on. We're gonna try and catch some more fish for you guys. Oh, there we go. Got one. Got one. Is he big or is he? You don't think so? She says she doesn't think it's big. It's swimming towards us now. Wow. Could be wrong. No, I think it's. I, oh, there he goes. He's uh. Oh, decent. Oh wow. These are all good. All right, we're just gonna try and flip him up here. But wow, a sizable bass on the crank. I'm liking this. Let's see what we got here. Reaction rod, soft tip. Get up in the boat. That might be the biggest of the day, actually. Very fat. Holy moly. Barely hooked again. It was barely hooked again. Oh my gosh. That's why you need a crankbait rod, y'all. That's why you need a rod with a soft tip. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. This is insane. These fish could be getting away from us so easily and I think we're just getting lucky. Anyways, another solid bass. This is a crazy day of fishing. Whew, let's try and get this thing to 2,000 likes. If we can do that, I think we might just break out some more tackle box videos in the future. Maybe uh, have one prepped and ready for the fall bite. How about that? Oh, she's on. What are you throwing? Saucy swimmer. Oh, that's the biggest one of the day. That's the biggest one of the day. Let me get this out of your way. Am I flipping? Uh, yeah, you better. Oh, he might be the biggest one of the day. He looked really good at first. Maybe not. Oh, I don't know. He's looking pretty oh, lengthy. Okay. And that's so sick. Like he just gobbled it. Wow. Gobbled. Insane. But barely hooked. <sighs> So crazy. All right guys, so we haven't busted out the measuring board in a while and whenever I first flipped this fish in the boat, I was like, dang, that's a pretty lengthy fish. Considering all we've brought in today, it's not super plump like some of the other fish. So I'm gonna put this guy on the board, see kind of what we're working with. I would say this is probably like a two and a half. So measuring fish, we always wanna have the mouth closed. This guy's like fighting with me and we can pinch the tail. So this guy's looking at right about 18 and a half inches. These fish got big old mouths, look at that. Probably a good solid two and a half pounder. Fun fish, that was a really cool bite right off of a point using that same saucy swimmer with the underspin. Let's get it back in the water. Working them through the reeds. All right. That's the muscle rod, huh? Nice. nice. <laughs> you good? See ya. Yeah. Yep, I think so. Or, okay. Nice. Oh, he ran out deep. It's not been in the rod. <laughs> 
Oh shoot, he looks good. Oh, oh dang, that looks pretty good there for a second. Oh, oh wow. That's the best of the day. <laughs> Saucy swimmer just brought in a boss. Oh my goodness, we're a spot lock on this trolling motor. We are thinking she might be the biggest of the day. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on the scale. Not a giant by any means, but a good freaking fish. Not quite, but 3.96 it's holding at. So just shy of a four pounder. Literally four one hundredths shy of a four pounder. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> decent. First fish in a while. I'm like over here looking like, maybe I should fish all this stuff. It looks pretty good. And then I just get a little subtle bite. <laughs> you wanna throw one? Yeah, that's one thing we didn't talk about was the accessories. If you are gonna be throwing the crank out of this box and these treble hooks, you definitely want some pliers because you'll end up in a sticky situation like this and uh, you will really be needing them. There we go, bud. We will see ya. Oh. Do, do, do. <laughs> Just letting him fight it out. That's a pretty good one, huh? <laughs> oh, shoot. He's going crazy with it. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, good one for underwater footage. He would have been a good actor. There we go. <sighs> nice, sizable one in the boat. Oh, I thought Devin had one too. There we go. Oh, she does have one. We did double up. She, hers is probably bigger. No? Oh, okay, I was gonna say, on that swim bait, you never know what you're gonna get. Oh gosh! <laughs> nice. She already threw the little one back. All right, there goes that one. Crank bait. Pulling them out. You got me stone. Crank bait. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a little guy already. Oh, there's one. Oh, Jesus, what happened? He's in the tree. <laughs> This is why I don't use right-handed reels anymore. I can't get comfortable with the rod. Jeez. Bonus rig for y'all. Texas rig fish. Oh, double up. Oh my goodness. We have enough right-handed that it's like... Just made it back, you guys. A few more catches on the crankbait. One on the Texas rig, throwing a little bonus rig there for you guys. Uh, another staple bait of ours. If you guys are not throwing a Texas rig, just something to add to the arsenal. We had a quarter ounce weight, four aught hammer hook, and then a crack and crawl. That was our go-to for today in those trees right before we dip. But thank you so much to Carl's Bait and Tackle for sponsoring today's episode. I hope you guys learned a lot from it and are grabbing a tackle box for yourself over at shopcarls.com. Until the next one, you guys, peace out.